Is it really possible for a tiny tweak to your morning coffee routine to ignite your metabolism and put your body into full fat burning mode for the rest of the day? Check out the link in the video description now and transform your morning coffee into a metabolism boosting super drink. R.E.X. Hoyerman was a mediocre marksman who seamlessly blended in at an exclusive shooting club that he visited a day before one of his alleged victims, Jessica Taylor, disappeared, a local gun instructor says. Taylor vanished on July 21, 2003. The 20-year-old's mutilated torso was found five days later in a wooded area just over a mile from the Pekinik River Sportsman's Club in Manorville, New York. Hoyerman, 60, was indicted for the killing of Taylor and another woman, Sandra Costilla, in court last week, bringing his alleged victim count up to six with an investigation still ongoing. In court documents, Prosecutors shared a date book belonging to Hoyerman from around the time of Taylor's disappearance which included an entry for July 20 to attend a shooting event at Pekinik River at 11 a.m. New York High Power founder Ira Ruderman told our Channel Club records show that Hoyerman did attend the event in question. Ruderman shared an image of Hoyerman's score sheet from the competition dated July 20, 2003, as proof. Five days later, a dark-colored Chevrolet pickup truck was seen by a witness backed up in the same wooded area near where Taylor's remains would be found on July 26. The description of the truck matched the 2002 dark green Chevrolet Avalanche that Hoyerman owned at the time, prosecutor said. Partial skeletal remains of another sex worker murdered on Long Island, Valerie Mack, were found even closer to Pekinik River in 2000. Hoyerman has not been charged in connection with Mack's murder but Suffolk County District Attorney Ray Tierney confirmed he is under investigation as a leading suspect. Ruderman, who has been participating in and running events at Pekinik since 1995, says he has had a handful of run-ins with Hoyerman over the years. He described the hulking 6'6 six six former architect as affable and otherwise unassuming. I don't remember when I first met him because so many years have gone by, but I know I met him and competed against him in some of these events in the early 2000s, said Ruderman. This guy is six foot five or six. He's big. There aren't too many people of his size out on the range, so you remember him when you see him and you know who he is. The only distinctive thing about him was how huge he is. Otherwise, he was just an affable, regular guy. He came out and did what he was supposed to do, there was nothing about him that stood out. Ruderman recounted sharing many one-to-one -one conversations with Hoyerman but said the topic of discussion was never anything exotic or untoward. When asked about Hoyerman's capabilities as a marksman, Ruderman added, he was just average to mediocre. He wasn't really into the sport. Some of us go up and compete in the national matches and bigger championships, but he's one of the casual guys in the community. I have friends like that who have been doing it 20 years and they shoot terribly but they don't care because they like going out there and hitting the target with bullets. Ruderman shared with our channel photos of Hoyerman at the Pekinik Club helping to train young marksmen for a sanctioned safety program called Small Arms Firing School, SAFS, which focuses on gun safety and marksmanship for legal competition. He said he only became aware of the images when our channel reached out to him for comment about them on Monday. Hoyerman was not a member of Pekinik River but the 2006 SAFS event was open to the public and willing experienced attendees were asked to assist the younger marksman, and Hoyerman obliged, Ruderman said. His last known appearance at the exclusive club, which boasts a year-long waiting list, came in April 2010. Ruderman said he instantly recognized Hoyerman when he was arrested for murder in July 2023. He said it makes him feel uneasy to know he'd been in the company of an alleged serial killer during the time his alleged killing spree was in full operation. The moment I heard it on the news I made my wide rewind the TV, shared Ruderman. I think they mispronounced his name at first, but when I heard Rex and saw his picture on the screen, I was like, holy s asterisk asterisk t. It's creepy to know you've even been around someone like that. Obviously, He's innocent until proven guilty but the evidence against him is stacking up and it sounds damning. It just is creepy, he added. In life, you never know what's be.